We lift you high, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. I got a task of something that the Lord has charged me to, to talk about today. But before I do, I want to ask some questions, and then I'm going to invite my brother uh, to come up and, 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 and do something real quick. Co-pastor started something, well, Minister, Minister Pringle started something. Then co-pastor started it, and then, so now I got to add some more to it. Minister Tom said something that, uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said, if you don't learn to worship God correctly, you'll end up worshiping the profane. You'll end up worshiping things that you shouldn't worship. And he meddled in that, and the enemy tried to fight him for it, but he made some profound statements on that, and I watched him as he delivered the way he always does, and I watched the enemy fight the way he always does. Co-pastor began to talk, and the Lord had begun to ask me some things about his name and about his character. <clears throat> and the enemy has been attacking me because I don't believe he wanted me to talk about what he wanted me to talk about, but at the end of last week when she started talking, the Lord gave me my message while I was on the plane listening to her. It's an interesting thing. But before I do that, I want to do like I always do and ask you a question. You ready? Scripture says, rain came. Well, not scripture, but the song says, rain came, winds blew. But my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, and I'm going to make it through. So I just got a question. Is there any of you that have a quick, remember we're doing 30 seconds, testimony of when winds came and rains, well, when rain came and winds blew, but your house was built on him, that God answered? I'm going to give you one. I'm going to start it off. Last week, um, I had a student, and it's still on the way, so I, there ain't so much I could share. And they wrote a long letter, 20-something pages to be exact. And they uh, said that they were leaving, that they were going to run away, that they weren't coming back, that they were going to. And they said that either I'm going to make it or I'm going to die. And so I called my mother-in-law, and my mother-in-love, and I asked them to pray. I called people and asked them to pray. And you know, we have a prayer line that meets every you know, what, you know, and they pray. Like, that's what they do, pray warriors, they pray. Ain't a question of if they're going to pray or just when they're going to they pray. And how many of you know that while they were praying, the next day, the kid walked back into the house? I, I, I just... <clears throat> while they were praying, while they were in the middle of calling on the name of the Lord, he walked back into the house. I don't think you really understand what it's like whenever you pray. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Is there anybody else have a testimony of when something was going on in your life? I know y'all shared, and I know, I hope y'all don't get tired of sharing, but the scripture says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So if you get, I'll take maybe, maybe two or three, if anybody have one, where the Lord did something in their life. When the rains came, when the winds blew, you were at a tough time in your life, and God came through. Anybody? Any takers, any takers. Rahelio, my man of 50 grand. I can always count on you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm a test engineer at the shipyard, and a few months ago we were preparing for like a sea trial, and we were doing kind of like our regular checks, and when we were down there, we realized like, over like 80 something of our like channels for testing were incorrectly like placed and like at that moment like man we have like two days before we got to be done so just kind of like prayed and just try to just stayed calm and just we had two um co-workers were willing to just stay with me so we stayed until like 9 p.m that night just fixing it all 
And just that whole time, I was just trying to keep that peace, just kind of humming, just worship, just keeping that peace. And we, we got it fixed. Stayed until like 9 p.m. So we were there like 16 hours that day. But then like I got back to my office. And then at that same, like that day, I got an email from my boss that I just got him promoted. That, so, that, so just that timing was just crazy, yeah. <laughs> so it was really great. And then my f family had come that night. They surprised me for my graduation. So it was just, just that whole day was just a whirlwind of emotions. And it was just great. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 There are another one. The name of oh, the Lord. Stand up. I'll move on this side to you. This way. Okay. So a time that God has been there and changed the course of events. Suicide. Twice. There was a time when I was in love, I thought, with a girl. Didn't work. And so I thought that I could not live without her. So I have scars still on my wrist where I attempted to cut my wrist to separate myself from here. Um, but God said no. There was, there was a time when I took a 45 revolver. I put the bullet in the gun. I cocked it. I was about to rock it. I put the gun in my mouth. And God said, no, no. So in the time of trouble and challenge, when the enemy is saying, you're not enough, God says, you are. God says, I am not done with the work I have in you. My wife was in a car accident, 3-19-19, March 19th of 2019. For four minutes, she was gone. The police officer walked over and said, no pulse, no movement. But when did something, came back. She was moving the car. But God said, not yet. I have a purpose for you. I have things for you to do. So when you think that the shadow of cloud and of, of murk and, and, and disconnect is there, don't be. God has a plan. It gives you a verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall, shall, not might, but shall renew your strength. <laughs> but God. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, Hallelujah. my God. Hallelujah. I need you to understand that this man is a national tennis coach. Yes. He's a national coach. Do you know how many lives would have been negatively affected or wouldn't have been affected at all had he succeeded with what the enemy wanted him to do? This man has mentored and is mentoring future champions. But I do need to point you out to something. That some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. Because had he gotten what he wanted, what he thought he wanted it, that beautiful young lady sitting over there who is beside him at every turn. I need y'all to understand that sometimes... Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! I am, like, so full. And I don't know... I don't know if I can sit just, thank, just without just giving a few moments just to bless the Lord and praise the Lord. If someone else has something to share, we'll, we'll share that in a moment. But to bless the Lord, we just heard some awesome, awesome testimonies. So let's just take a moment and bless the Lord just because he's good, Hallelujah. just because he's great, just because he's mighty, just because he's true, just Hallelujah. because he's God, because he's a keeper, he's the one that loves you with an everlasting love. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank Hallelujah, you. God. Hallelujah, God. Is there God. another? Is there anyone else who wanted to share? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Mm. Okay. There is connection and there's divine connection. My children, both of them, mm. my two older children, because we have seven, but our two older children go to see and you. And um, last year, we were trying to connect my son, Lim, with Pastor Herman. And there's so many things just were going on, and they never connected. And so this year, when our daughter um, enrolled and got accepted into CNU, um, I sent Herman, Pastor Herman, I sent him a message and I said, hey, we're going to be moving Lim and Abby into CNU and all the things. And so I was not expecting that he would come and help get both of our children all in one day moved in at CNU, and it was just such a blessing. And so my daughter and both of my children, they do sports at CNU. My son runs track, and my daughter is a cheerleader. But weeks had gone by and all the things, and um, I, you know, we know that our children, are, especially our older children, you know, we have trained them up in the way that they should go, and and we know that now that they're not home with us in Northern Virginia, that, you know, we have done what we were supposed to do and leave them in the hands of the Lord. And so uh, a few weeks ago, I got a phone call from my son, and he told me that our daughter had a concussion. And just a thing that happened, cheer stunt and all this, and um, I was like, okay. And this is the first injury that she's had where I wasn't able to be present. And even though Northern Virginia is just two and a half hours away, it was nighttime and I wasn't able to be present. And so I'm getting all the information and I'm totally in mama mode and all the things. And um, I called her and I heard her voice and she was in the ER. And so I said, okay, what are we going to do? And I got out the shower. I told my husband what happened and everything, and I got out of the shower. And I literally, my phone was in the bathroom, and I grabbed my phone, and the Lord said, call Shanika. And so I did. And I said, I'm so sorry to call. It's so late. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And I said, um, Abigail's, in the ER. And I had not finished like saying all the things, but no sooner than I told her the whole story, they were both up dressed and driving to the hospital to be with my daughter. And to know that my older babies have a home away from home, to know that, you know, my husband and Hermit, Pastor Herman and Shanika, they were reconnected. And they went to college together. But you would think that I've known them, you know, lo longer. <laughs> and I'm just so thankful because when Abby had to go to the hospital, they were there. 
when she had to go to the doctor, they were there. And they've been there. And one thing that blesses my soul is because it really does take a village to raise your children. But it takes the right village. It doesn't just take the village. It takes the right village. And I'm so thankful to God because I know that I know that I know that even when they're not home with us in Northern Virginia, they've got Auntie Shanika and Uncle, they call him Uncle PH. You know, and they've got them. And so I'm just so thankful because I don't know. I mean, I could have called somebody else maybe, but I knew that they were the right ones. They were the right ones because they knew what to do. They knew where to go. They knew the questions to ask. They knew all the things, and I knew that my baby girl, which is really not my baby girl because this is my baby girl, but I knew that she was okay. And so I say all that to say that connection really means something, but divine connection means the most. Because what I know is that just as we're praying for all of our children, they have a circle right here that prays for them and thinks about them and checks on them and all the things. And so I just wanted to say that God is good. And it matters who you are connected to. And I want to openly say thank you. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you, darling. Before we love you. Before we is there is there another one before we move on? I thought somebody had one on this side. Is there another one? If no, it's okay. Okay, what? Uncle P. That's my man right there. That's my day one right there. One of one of them anyway. All right, so uh for those who don't know, I've been working at a job for a minute. But um needless to say probably like uh last month they had like this big furlough. And um the crazy part about it was it was about maybe so I, I tried to apply for different positions. Um three or four different positions. It's like every time I tried to apply, I ain't get it. You know what I'm saying? And um needless to say all of those people that was in those positions, they got furloughed. So, uh, and then on top of that, like other people that has been there longer than me, they got furloughed as well. So, oh, let me see. So anyway, needless to say, uh, well basically, God, he just keeps sustaining me because I wasn't one of the ones that got furloughed. And then uh, actually when I did, did go back to work, um, I'm, I'm actually doing something a little different. Um, um, I guess it's like a little raise, so to speak. So I just want to say I, I, I just thank God that he is, he is uh, just sustaining me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you, I'm, I'm going to do, do one more thing. I'm going to cut my message short because y'all pretty much preached a lot of it. But one of the things I love about, I'm going to say this out loud, I, I love the men in my church. One of the things I love about the men in our church is that they just so collected and cool. Somebody can roll up in here with something and probably be like, that's what's up. <laughs> you really want to do that, player? You really? That's what you're trying to do today? <laughs> it's just, it just uh, I know everything is going to be all right attitude, and I just love that. Uh, before I um, minister, I want to invite my brother, Dr. Um, Roderick Avery, um, minister, pastor, I want to invite him up. Uh, I just asked him to do something. I don't know what he's going to do before I, before I minister. But our scripture, I didn't pick the scripture out today. It was picked out last week. Uh, it's found in Genesis, chapter number 32. But can you just come up and I can give, give you the mic, brother? And uh, we met during one of the worst times in my life. And I told you, remember that story about me falling down the steps in the library? Guy introducing me to Pastor Shanika, all the Pastor Gray, everybody within the same week. Pastor Carson, Dr. Roger. 
my brother, Roderick Avery, was one of the ones he introduced me to during that week that I had fell down the stairs at a and after having told God that he was wrong and he was foul and that, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, God was like, don't question me, but you can't ask me questions. And I fell down the steps, and that week I met Tim Day. Y'all met him, seven, six, nine, seven foot tall. Y'all met him. God changed my life that week by introducing me to about 15 people. She was the first one I saw, and he was one of the ones I saw. But go ahead, brother. Amen. You want me to read that? No, you don't have to read it, oh, but whatever oh. you want to do. You can, oh, okay, okay. You know. I want to be obedient. I, I didn't know if you wanted me to read this. I was going to read it. No, I'll read it. <laughs> um, I, I have, I, I want to read this real quick, um, like just two lines. Um, it's from think? Deuteronomy mm -hmm. um, 7 and 6. Um, and you can go, you know, at home, read it and check it out. But um, I want to read the New International. It says, for you are the people, or are a people, holy to the Lord, your God. The Lord, your God, has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession." And, you know, I think about that. I mean, I love that. Uh, obviously, he was talking about the children of Israel. But how many know that we are a spiritual Israel? Amen. Amen. And so the fact that God calls us precious. Yeah. Whew. You're precious. That's why he didn't let you go. It's precious. He's precious, you're precious. That's why he keeps blessing all of us. We're precious in his sight. But also, how many know that <laughs> we have a precious Lord? Yes. Come on. Amen? Amen? We're precious to him. But let me see the hands of those that say, Jesus is precious to you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Real quick. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I I'm tired. You ever get weak? I am weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on. Praise the Lord and lead me on. Now I like this one. I like this one. When my way gets drear and the darkness appears mm. when my way is all most gone hear my cry hear my call take my hand yes God Lest I fall, take my hand, praise the Lord, and lead me home. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 Take my hand. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Whoo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Whoo. <sighs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to. Hallelujah. If y'all don't mind, hallelujah, I'm going to fill in the blanks. I'm going to read a scripture and I'm going to fill in the blanks in the interest of time. But, uh, <sighs> Mm. Before I get started, God just wanted me to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you the question, and then I'm going to preach. God wanted me to ask you the question. I keep hearing it, and you know who I am. Whenever I hear stuff over and over and over and over and over again, I got to say it. All right? What would it take for me to convince you that I'm real? I, don't, it, I just keep hearing that over and over and over in my head. Um, And I'm trying to get, trying to do this assignment because I know he told me to do it. Um, what would it take for me to convince you that I'm real, that I'm alive, that I'm, that I'm God? Um, I, I gave you this example, and I'll do it quick. I'll, I'll show you quick. I gave you this example several weeks ago, and I, I showed you Sister Crystal was messing with people out in the parking lot. Um, I gave it to her, and I told her to stretch it out, and she stretched it out. And this cord stretched all the way out into the parking lot. I don't know if you remember. And I showed you the sign right here. I showed you this, and I said, this is your life, this black part. This black part is your life. And all of this is eternity. And I said, you have this long. In this, you get married. You, you, you live. You love. You, 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 you do all kind of crazy stuff. You do all kind of good stuff. But when you answer the question who God is in this, it determines where and how you spend all of that. And I remember when we did it, people looked back, and it was at a funeral the first time, the second time, and people looked back, and Sister Crystal was out in the parking lot waving like this. And God keeps telling me, what would it take for me to convince you that I'm real? I'm going to skip to verse number 20. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Twenty-four. All right. Whew. And it says, and Jacob was left alone. If you want to stand, you can stand for the reading of the word. I'm a soldier, so I always stand. Attention to orders. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And when the man saw that he had, did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hip, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And then he said, let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. I just want to steal something from one of my spiritual fathers, I know Bishop Brooks and Pastor Willie, but I want to I 
I, I'm just going to do this just for him, and I'm going to tell you that sometimes God can give you a limp that will make you walk straight. Father, we bless you. We lift you up. We magnify your name, for there is none like you. None in heaven, none in earth. You alone are God, and so we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. I'll, 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 I'll be as quick as possible. <clears throat> Our God is faithful. Our God is awesome. Our God is quick. Our God is living. Our God is breathing. Our God is in control from God's beginning, and he has no beginning. He's always been the Elohim, the super judge, the great I am, the God most high. He's always been, wait, theologians believe that God's initial name was pronounced with only consonants, and we added the vowels to it. Yes. And when you say his name the way it's supposed to be said, it sounds like a baby's first breath, or when we're breathing, or when we're struggling to breathe. That lets you know that anytime you even breathe, you're saying his name. Yes. Our God is incredible. Yes. Our God is the same God who told, uh, who, 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 who told the prophet, I'm not going to chase you, fella. You can run from me all you want to be, but I think you forgot I am the which was, the which is, and without ever moving, the which is to come. So when you run to where you're running, I'll be there. When you're running from me where I told you you're going to be, I'll be there. And when you get to where you're going, I will have already been there because I'm God and I ain't got to chase nobody. And when I swallow you up in fish guts and you down in the bottom of the ocean, that brother was in the bottom of the ocean for three days. I just thought about that. That was a stubborn brother, but I'll leave that alone. And God, and on the third, he, he repented. But God was there to hear him. David said, where can I go that I can get away from God? Yeah. I need you to understand that our God is so supreme that from his beginning, and he's always had none, and I say this a lot, he's always been God. He's always been king. He's always sat on the throne. He's always been, my way is past finding out. He's always been God. Well, in the scripture, we have a brother named Jacob. And from his beginning, Jacob has always had struggles. The word Jacob in, the, in birth literally means in Hebrew and Greek, supplanter or trickster or one who, who does things. And Jacob was born and he was a twin and he had a brother named Esau. Esau's name meant red, he meant hairy, it meant, you know, he was, he, Esau was described as a manly man. You understand what I'm saying? Esau was out, you know, killing animals. Jacob was in the tent cooking animals with his mama. Esau was a daddy's boy and Jacob was a mama's boy. It's in the scripture, y'all got to read it. It's found in Genesis 30 through whatever. And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Real quick, what happened was when they were first coming out, what happened was to, to decide the birthright, when a baby was born, if it was supposed to be twins, the first baby, they would tie a ribbon around his hand. Well, they tied the ribbon around his hand, but the Bible says that the younger brother, which was Jacob, pulled the older brother back in. I didn't make that up. That's scripture. And he came out, and the Bible says that ever since that day, Jacob had been manipulating, tricking, doing things to get his way and get around the process. The Bible described Jacob as, if I can be honest with you, a con artist. Yeah. Jacob was a con artist. I think some of them people in the Bible are going to beat me up but I, when I get to heaven. But I got to tell it the way it is. And I, believe, I love God because God will allow you to see stories in the Bible so that you can see yourself. And Jacob's name meant trickster and supplanter, and everywhere that Jacob went, he had game to run on somebody. When he met his father-in-law, his father-in-law tried to run game on him, and he tried to run game on his father-in-law. His father-in-law tricked him into marrying two women. One of them was Rachel, and the other one was Leah. The Bible disguised one of them as being a little cross-eyed. It did. I, I, I'm not making this up. Y'all, this is not... It's in there. And, 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 and Jacob married one and had to be married to her for years so that he can get the one that he wanted. 
But Jacob would trick his father-in-law into getting his cattle. He would trick everybody. Everywhere he went, he had game. Jacob ran game because that was who he was and that was what he did. But the Bible says that the straw was met when Jacob, his father, was dying. And his father was dying, and the Bible says that his mother even came in on it and said, you got to get the birthright, so I want you to go in and trick your father. And Jacob made a meal and cooked, tricked his father, and the father came, he came in, and the father touched him, but Jacob had on fur so that he can feel like his brother. How many of you know that sometimes there's imposters in the spirit? And somebody can take your position, but if God didn't give it to them, they can never take your place. And so Jacob went in and tricked his father, and when he, his father pronounced a blessing over him, and when his father pronounced a blessing over him, then his brother came in a little bit later, and his brother came in to get the blessing with the animal and the meal that he had made for his father, and his father said, wait a minute, I've already blessed you. And he said, no, dad, that wasn't me, that wasn't me, that was my brother. That, somebody, and, and he found out, and he said, you know what? My father only has a few days to live. And when he dies, I'm going to kill that rascal. I'm going to kill my brother. My brother took my birthright. He took my blessing. He took the thing that I was supposed to be bestowed upon me. He took the fact. He took, he took all, everything that the heir was supposed to get. How many of you know that's a foreshadowing of Christ, though? But that's a, for another story. We're, for, we're, we're, we're brothers with Christ. And God gave Jesus all power. So if God gave Jesus a lamp, that means he got to give us a lamp. We don't have to go through the Jacob and Esau thing because God has already bestowed upon us everything we need when Christ died and he participated in it. That's a whole other message for a whole other time. But Esau decided that I'm going to kill this dog. I'm going to kill this rascal. As soon as my father is gone, it's on. It's on sight. When I see you, I see you. It's up. Hands is being laid on you. On sight, for those of you who don't know, on site means wherever I see you, that's where I saw you. If I see you in the doctor's office, I'm putting paws on you. If I see you at your grandma's funeral, I'm putting paws on you. And I may give your grandma something. And wherever I see you, if it's on site, it's on site. If it's up, it's up. It's whenever I see you, hands will be laid. And that's what on site means. But anyway, that's a whole other story. We're going to leave that alone. And Jacob's mama sent him away. And Jacob in like fashion, he ran. The funny thing I love about God is that God meets people right where they are. Not where they pretend to be. Not where they want to be. Not where they're going to be. Not even at times where they should be. Ask the woman with, at the well. God met her at the well while she was being manipulated, used, abused. God met the woman who was in the car in the act of adultery and prostitution. Right where that point where they were going to stone her at. God met Lazarus at the tomb. God met Peter on the water after a failure. Wherever you meet God at, God will meet you and his personality will reveal who he is to you based on your situation. There's a situation that will reveal revelation of who God is. And God will meet you right at the point of your suffering. Right at the point of your struggle. Right at the point of your whatever it is that you're going through. He'll meet you. But it's going to be for your good, but for his glory. God met Moses at the burning bush. I love God went that way. I, I met God a, 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 in several places. One time I was at the cemetery, and, and God, God showed up. So I understand what you're saying. And God showed up. God will meet you. But God's going to meet you where you are, but he's going to meet you his way. The reason why I'm prefacing it this way is because Jacob all his life had been a con artist. Jacob was wounded early, and he went around harming a whole bunch of other people. Check this out, y'all. If you do not allow God to heal you from your situations, your pain and your trauma will become a weapon. Hear me when I say that. I prophesied this one day. I was in church and I saw 
a, a, a young, a young person in the spirit and there was a cage and the cage had opened up. And I said, I believe God wants to let you out of the cage, but you're so comfortable with your cage that you'll stand there even when the doors are open. Hear me when I say this. There are times when God will come for you and he'll come for you and he'll meet you right at the point of everything that had happened to you, everything that had been wrong with you, everything, and that's where he met Jacob. Jacob's name meant trickster and supplanter. And when Jacob found out that his brother Esau was coming, years later, years later, Jacob had did a whole bunch of crazy stuff by then. But years later, when Jacob is, finds out that his brother Esau is not too far from him and that there's no way he can get to where he's trying to go, I want you to catch that, without going past the thing that he had messed up previously. Remember I told you God is the God which is in your presence. He's the God which was, and without ever moving, he's the God which is to come. Sometimes God will deal with you in your presence to let you know that he's God. He'll back you up into your past to deal with your pain and your hurt and your disappointment and those who hurt you, those who left, those who disappointed you. And then after that, he'll back you, he'll propel you into your future because the battle's not over your past, it's over your future. He'll do all that to show you that I am God and I am God alone. So God did that to Jacob. Jacob found out that his brother was coming and there was no way he can get around it. By this time, Jacob is rich. By this time, Jacob's foolery and trickery and all the other stuff had gotten him to a point where he looked like he was blessed because he had things. But how many of you know being blessed isn't about you having things? It's about you not letting the things have you. And so Jacob was in a pickle because his brother was coming. And no matter how hard he tried to weasel his way out of it, his brother's coming. In fact, he found out that his brother was coming, and his brother was coming with 400 people. I'm sorry, not 400 people, 400 warring men. Not to mention everybody else. That meant if it was going to go down, his brother was going to win. His brother was coming. And Jacob remembered that. But how many of you know that when somebody's in turmoil, when somebody's issues are up, everybody is the fault but them? Jacob called his brother and Jacob said, I'm, I'm, I'm sending you to Esau. And Jacob, he did this. Jacob took everything he owned, all his cattle, all his goat, all his oxen, all his people, all his workers, all his, his family, and, 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 and everything that he owned, and he sent it before him. Anytime a person sends other people before them, what they're saying is that I'm willing to sacrifice you to make sure that I'm okay. Don't, don't be alarmed. I went through this last week. I went through this last week. After she preached, the Lord dealt with me for this for a whole week, nailed me to the wall. I'm talking about, and, 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 and brought me back and healed me and dusted me off and got my little knees, wiped my knees up, and you know what I'm saying, wiped my tears and all that other stuff because I realized that I had done that. But he began to send people before him. And as Esau is approaching, Esau sees a bunch of cattle. And he says that whenever they say something to you and they stop and they say, this is the Lord, this is uh, from your brother and your servant Jacob. He already trying to run game. Which lets me know this. Some people aren't sorry for what they did. They just sorry they got caught. Okay. I got to go a little further now. So pray for me. Jacob name meant trickster, supplanter, and Jacob was used to doing whatever he felt like he needed to do to get what he needed to get. And I get it. Listen, listen, there'll be times for the other encounters. Remember that? Our co-pastor talked about the, the encounter where God knocked somebody off their horse, and she talked about the encounter where God met somebody and they needed healing because their legs was because their legs were broke and they was doing all that other stuff. God meets people and sometimes God meets you and God meets you and, and you're a victim. 
Sometimes God meets you and you're a victimizer. But however God meets you, at the point where you meet him, something is going to happen because you have just ran into the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jacob was about to do that. Jacob sent everything he had, he divided it up into threes. And he sent it ahead of him. And every time his brother encountered something, he said, well, this is from Jacob. You can have it. It's yours. Just know that he don't mean you no harm. What were they doing? They were manipulating their way through stuff. And God met Jacob. And after Jacob had sent everybody away, three different bands of people, he, he, it was interesting that he kept those things close to him. He kept the women and children, his wives and, and, and his, um, his, his, his concubines with him. But when it came down to it, after a while, he even sent them away. He sent them away, and he says, and when you meet him, tell him y'all he is too. <laughs> I ain't making this up. It's in there. I promise y'all. And they went before, and as Jacob began to cross over, the Bible says that Jacob sent them over in the middle of the night by themselves. And as they went over to meet Esau, his brother, who was supposed to have been coming to kill him, The Bible says that Jacob was left alone. Be careful how you treat your alone seasons. At night, during the darkest time of his life, when he's struggling with who he used to be and who he's going to be and what's going to happen now, God met him. And the Bible says that when he was left alone, a man showed up. How many of you know there wasn't no man? I'll prove it to you in a minute. A man showed up, and the man said, baby, you ready to fight? And Jacob grabbed that man, and that man grabbed Jacob, and they began to wrestle. And I believe the wrestling was more than just a physical activity. They were wrestling, and after a while, the Bible said they wrestled all night. I don't know if you've ever struggled with anything and stayed up all night wrestling. I don't know if you've ever had any issues and stayed up all night wrestling. I have. I'm not telling you about something I read about. I don't know if you ever had an issue or a, a, a problem or a something that you couldn't figure it out. You couldn't get rid of. You were hurt. You were wounded. You were scarred. Maybe it was something you did on your own. I don't care what it was. God don't even care. All I know is that at a certain point in your life, everybody is scheduled for a wrestling match with God. And God showed up and he said, tonight we wrestle. We're going to wrestle today, baby. We gonna be, you ready? Because I'm about that life. My first name is G-O-D. I am the Lord who changed not. We're going to wrestle today, baby. And they fought and they wrestled. And then about the breaking of day, because we can may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He says, let me go. And Jacob said, no. I don't know what he did during that wrestling match. But at some point, Jacob got a touch. And Jacob said, no, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. What is it about him struggling with this man made him realize that that man had the ability to bless him? But Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until you heal me. I'm not going to let you go until you help me. I got a fight that I'm definitely going to lose in the morning, but I will not let you go. I won't let you go until you, till you do something with me, yes. till you heal me, yes. till you save my, my life, till you save my this, till you save my that. I will not let you go. My finances is trash. I will not let you go until you bless me. My life is trash. I will not let you go until you bless me. My children are all over the place. I will not let you go until I see what serving you represents. I will not let you go. God, I must, ask, Paul said it this way, I must apprehend that which has apprehended me. I ain't letting you go. I ain't letting you go. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all done held on to everything else and everybody else. But you won't reach out for God? The maker of heaven and earth. The one that if he didn't, you wouldn't even receive your next breath. You can run out to everything else, titles, this, that, whatever, whatever. But you ain't going to run out to God? He says, I will not let you go 
until you bless me. Until you bless me, Lord, I won't be satisfied. Until you bless me, God, even until, God, you deal with me, God, less of me and more of you, God, until you bless me, I will not, I will not be satisfied until I see what serving you represents, I will not let you go. And then God asked him a weird question. I know it was God. I know I keep saying a man, but I know it was God. He says, you, let me tell you how I know it was God first so to get off my mind. Because after God blessed him, Jacob says, what is your name? And he said, I can't tell you that yet. See, Jesus' name hadn't been revealed. You know, God noticed him to reveal something. He got to reveal it to his mama first. God hadn't even told Mary what his name was yet. So why would he tell Jacob? And later on, it said that a man, that Jacob even acknowledged the fact that he wrestled with God. But Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he asked the question. He says, what is your name? Interesting question. God asks some weird questions sometimes. Walk up on the brother, see the brother can't walk. Do you want to be made whole? What do you think? Of? I've been struggling trying to get you there. And what's that in your hand? You looking at what's in my hand? God, God healed in some unconventional methods. Brother can't see, he spit in his eyes. See, y'all look at me, y'all phony, because y'all know if somebody spit in your eyes, somebody going to heal you, it'd be some hand. It, anyway, God has income. So God said, what is your name? In other words, what do people call you? They call you Pookie, Ray Ray, you know, Shaquinda, whatever it is, you know, it's something, you know what I'm saying? You know, your mama, you ain't ever going to be good for nothing but laying on your back. People call you all kind of stuff. What do they call you? What do they say your name is? What, do you, what is it that people know you for? Who are you? He says, my name is Jacob. In other words, I believe when Jacob said his name to God, he was admitting all the crazy stuff he had did previously. When Jacob said his name to God, he was admitting to every foul thing that he had did in, initially. And he says, my name is Jacob. And oh, that's why I love God. Because once you meet with God, I mean really meet with God. I ain't talking about no play play stuff. Once you meet with God and he, your, 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 your destiny, your name, your whoever you are would never be the same. And he says, I'm, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. What is your name? My name is Jacob. He says, your name will no longer be called Jacob. Yeah. Whoo! They ain't going to call you Pookie no more. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. You ain't Slick Sally no more. You ain't Robin Rob no more. You ain't none of them names no more. You, you understand what I'm saying? You ain't that no more. Your new name will be called Israel. And from out of the tribes of... Your new name... It's going to shape destinies. Your new name will be called. And from out of you, I will bring my son. From out of you, your new name will be. Your new name will have eternal ramifications. You can't operate in the foolishness no more after I've touched you and you. Here's the problem, though. Can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? I'm going to look at him because I'm about to say something. That's going to. Lord, help me, Holy Spirit. Some of y'all don't have too many wrestling matches with God. Now, God will wrestle with you as many times as it takes to get you right. But there are some people we should have learned by now. God had me tell somebody this the other day. Please don't hit me when you walk out in the parking lot. This last week, God had me tell somebody this. Sometimes, God will frustrate your plans so that your plans won't frustrate your destiny. There are times when God will tell you no 
and God will stop what you're doing and he'll ruin your plans because he knows that if you get what you want right now, it will ruin you. Do I need to repeat that again? There are times when God will stop what you're doing because he knows that if you get what you really want, then it will ruin you and turn you away from him. Anyway, God says this. Golly. I'm in it now. It, it, he told me to say some of this stuff, but he didn't. See, sometimes, let me be clear. God will tell you stuff that you're going to say, but he only tell you a small portion of it because he knew that if he would have told me everything, I wouldn't have said it. So I'm in uncharted water. But God says he touched the hollow of his thigh. In other words, Jacob was standing and wrestling on his own strength. And God touched it. And Jacob never walked the same way again. He gave him a limp that made him walk straight. He changed the way he walked with him forever. I'm telling you, there's an encounter with God that will change the way you walk with him forever. Things I used to do, I can't do them no more. I didn't say I didn't always think about it. Maybe you didn't want to do it every now and then. But I said, I can't do it anymore. There is a limp. There is a touch from God that will change the way you walk with man and the way you walk with him. There's a touch from God that can take away your pain when you wrestle with him. There's a touch from God that can take away your disappointment when you walk away from him. There's a touch from God that can take away your dysfunction whenever you walk with him. There's a touch of God from, that can take away everything when you walk with him. An encounter with God is real. I'm telling you, I don't know anything more real than God. I'm telling you, I've seen God do some strange things and confirm that it was him. If you notice, none of us talk. I didn't talk to Sister Monica before I came in here. I didn't talk to Minister Tom before I came in here. I didn't talk to anybody, Sister Chris, anybody that got up and spoke. I didn't even know what song he was going to sing. I didn't even know I was going to really ask him to sing. It was just a flip of the moment thing earlier this morning. And I said, hey, can you either pray or sing something? I didn't even know the song that he sung. How is it that everything lined up word for word, step upon step? I didn't even know that Brother Donald was going to share what he shared. I didn't know that any of the testimonies. But how is it that it all lined it up? Because God speaks. And there is a limp that's going to make, I'm telling you, all of us have an encounter with God. All of us have a wrestling point with God. And the sooner we get it over with, the better. I wish I had met God and wrestled with him when I was two. I promise you, some of the stuff I've been through, if I had met God a long time ago and, and had this little showdown and throwdown, I promise you my life would be so much better. Because can I be honest? I'm going to say this again. I don't know too many people that was more trifling than me. <laughs> but there's a limp that makes you walk straight when you wrestle with God. Oh, I mean, been, <laughs> we can believe on that. Listen, I don't know what situations you've been through in your life. I don't know the hurt. And when I say this, I promise you I'm not dismissing the hurt, the times you were manipulated, the times you were abused, the times you were touched or touched wrong. I don't know the times that people left, the times that people stayed, the times that people did you wrong. I don't know the fights, the whatever. I don't know a lot of those things. But I do know that God has a plan for you that's bigger than what you're going through. I do know that God has a destiny for you that's greater than your current experience right now. I do know that God's ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And I do know that God has a prepared place for you, a prepared time for you, a prepared season for you, a prepared destiny for you. And God knows what he's doing because God knew you before your great grandmama ever kissed your great granddaddy. God knew who you were. He knew you would be here. He knew that you were going to be struggling. God, stuff may catch us off guard, but it never catches God off guard. 
Stuff may catch us in a pickle. But God is never caught off guard. So if there's an area in your life, whether you're online, whether you're online, or no matter where you are, if there's an area in your life where you feel like you need to reach God, God is waiting. One of the greatest things you can say to God is, God, today, I will not let you go until you bless me. But you want to know, I'm starting to shift that now. Because I, I I had to ask myself a question. I struggle with things, but now my prayer has changed. And I said, God, even after you bless me, I still ain't letting you go. Even after you bless me, maybe, I want to level up on this thing. Even after you bless me, I still won't let you go. Because somewhere during the confines of you blessing me, I realized that none of it would mean anything without you. Somewhere, doing the healing, doing the tears, the depression, the PTSD, the the anger, the failures, the relationship failures, the losing a lot of money, the gaining a lot of money, the losing a lot of money again, the finding, the losing, the funerals, tears, the worrying about where your kids are now, worrying about what they're doing and what they're not doing or what they ain't doing right or what they're doing right. Somewhere between all that, I found that there was a sweet spot, a resting place, and it was him. So I said all that to say this. There's an area in your life where you need prayer. I want you to slip up your hand. I know. But hear me. You're going to have to wrestle sooner or later. One thing I love about God is that God don't have grandchildren. I mean, you can get in touch with God for a little while based on your parents and your grandparents. Sooner or later, it's got to be a one-on-one connection with you. Sooner or later. So is there an area, is there anyone in this room who needs prayer? Or who wants to rededicate their life to the Lord? Just slip up your hand. There's somebody online. There's somebody online. There's one. Prayer. 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 Listen, we can do this either way. Either you can come to the altar, the altar can come to you. But, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is there anybody else? Maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. My prayer is that God shows everybody in this room that he is real before the end of the week. Is there anybody in this room who wants prayer for any reason? Any reason, any reason, any reason, any reason, any reason. Is there anybody in this room who requires prayer? Is there anybody in this room who requires prayer? What about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Or salvation? the one. If you're seeing this and you're online, God is the same God. Same God. Same God. 
Same God. Same God. He loves you. But tonight, we're going to wrestle. We wrestle. Today, we wrestle with God. Today, we wrestle with God. We wrestle with God. We wrestle with God. We'll be done in a second. you to understand that sometimes even as a pastor there are defining moments where you talk to God and allow God to talk to you and I promise you I would never say anything fear God too much to say anything that displeases him. I'm telling you, there's a limp that will change everything. If you are struggling with unforgiveness, a wrestling point. You can never hold anybody else down while you're still without being down there with them. Sometimes you got to let it go. It doesn't always mean you have to continue in it. But you have to learn to forgive the way God forgives. Let it go. And walk with God. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Heaven, when you do that, Heaven is just as happy over one as if a thousand had came. Father, we thank you for your people. God, we thank you that you do all things well. We thank you, God, that the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word stands settled forever in heaven. And so, God, I thank you, God, that even as Jacob went to meet Esau, Jacob thought that there was going to be a war when he met him. But how many of you know that you're the same, same God That the same God who was wrestling with Jacob was also wrestling with Esau. And so by the time they met up, God, I thank you, God, that they were able to forgive each other and move on into what you have for each of them. And so, God, I bless you. We praise you. We adore you. We honor you. We lift you on high. We magnify your name. Have your way, God. We bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Will you just stand? Whew. Honey, 
thank you for earlier. Because after that, I didn't know what to do with the song. I was, I was struggling. I was like, after the song and the testimony, I didn't know what to do. But God is good. And so now, I say choose wisely. As we close, choose wisely. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you. May he give you peace. May your enemies come at you one way, but flee in seven. Huh. May your enemies come at you one way, but flee in seven. The Lord be gracious to you. Or may your enemies come at you. May your enemies come at you one way but flee in seven. Or may they get a revelation of who God is and worship with you. I pray that your testimony would be that it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. I pray that he keep you. Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Listen, go and enjoy the peace of the Lord and the favor of the Lord. Amen. Amen.